Hey, it's Lucky. This is part 3 of the Ultimate FPS Controller tutorial series. I'll leave a link to part 1 and part 2 below. Uh, so follow those first to get to the starting point that we're at here today. I got a lot of requests in the last two tutorials for extra features. Uh, a lot more than I expected, to be honest. So they're not going to be making it into this video. I'm first going to finish off the tutorial series that I intended with all the features that I showed in the demo. And in future tutorials, I hope to get to all of the features that you guys requested. But thanks so much for all the requests. And if you have some more, leave them down below here. I'm going to try to get to all of them. And without further ado, let's first finish up the controller how I intended it. So let's get into it. So before we get started today, I would like to clean up some of the code of the last tutorials. Uh, I noticed we uh, changed our speed quite sloppily. So right here we're setting our crouching speed, we're setting our uh, current speed to sprinting speed, and we're setting our current speed to walking speed. And here uh, we're not actually setting our current speed, but we're duplicating code. You can see right here we're doing the direction times the current speed, and right here we're doing the direction times uh, this other variable, but it's basically the same code, only we're swapping out this variable, uh, which is bad practice because we already have this code, so we don't need to duplicate it. We just need to change that value. So I'm just going to take this logic out. And here above, we're already checking for sliding. So it's also a duplicate. So if we just paste it in here, remove that if sliding because we're already doing it there. And we don't need to set our velocity here. We just need to change that current speed equal to this slide timer times the slide speed. And right now we'll have uh, the exact same functionality. We just took out three lines of code. Uh, and the other thing I want to clean up with the speed variable is, like I said before, here we're setting our current speed and our crouching speed. Let's lerp this value because right now our sprint will be instant and our crouch will be instant. Just feels a lot cleaner when we lerp it. So in front of uh, setting our crouch speed, we're going to add the lerp function. We're going to lerp our current speed to the crouching speed. I'm going to do that by delta times our lerp speed. So I'm just going to copy this whole line, paste it right behind here and right behind here. So we're setting the walking speed and the sprinting speed. And just control X, change that crouching speed to the sprinting speed. Here the same crouching speed to the walking speed. So let's quickly check if everything is still working. Yep, only now our speeds are applied with a little bit of lerp. So the next thing I'd like to do is include air control. So let's quickly run the project so I can explain. Air control is basically when you're in the air, how much control you have of the character. Right now, if we jump and we let go of uh, our WASD, you'll see it will stop midair. We can also just move midair. And we want some control in the air. So when you jump and you want to pull back, have some control over the character, but not complete control because that feels really unnatural. So first let's completely take away the control. We can do this right here, we're setting the direction. This is where we're applying our uh, input direction. So I'll just say if is on floor, we'll apply the direction. So if you are in the air, we'll have no control of the character. Let's see how it looks. You can see when we in the air, we're committed to that uh, jumping arc. We can no longer correct, which could be, it's more realistic like this. This is the most realistic way of doing it because of course, when you're in the air in real life, you cannot control your vector anymore. But we want some control because a lot of video games have this and just feels natural. So in order to do that, we're gonna add an else statement below here. And we're gonna copy this whole line. And we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna correct that lerp speed because this is uh, the amount of input direction that's applied at any given moment to our direction. So let's just change this to air lerp speed. Let's copy that variable, move all the way up to the top of the code, and set this variable. Uh, where's the lerp speed? Right there. Air lerp speed. Let's set it equal to something small. It's the tree. Uh, 
and now you can see we can jump and we have some control in air but not a lot but one more thing you can see that's not uh, correct is when we let go of the buttons we still stop midair which is not what you want at least it's not what I want I want to so when you jump and you let go of everything you commit it to that arc and you can just do this natural uh, jumping arc so let's move back down let's add one more condition to this uh, else and here we're going to check if we're holding down a button so if input direction is not equal to uh, zero which is factor 2.0 then we're going to apply that error lerp speed it's giving me an error one second oh need to indent this so now you can see when you jump you let go of everything get that nice natural arc you can also do a little slide jump because you get a little more momentum out of a slide all right, so that's air control done. Let's move on to keyframe animation. This is animating uh, a bump when you jump or when you fall something or the roll that you see in the demo. Uh, this is done by animating the camera. And for this, we're gonna free up the camera. And freeing up means uh, we're no longer gonna animate it with code. We're just gonna use the keyframing animation. Maybe this doesn't make sense, but I'll explain it. Give me a second. So we'll go to our free looking logic and here where we're setting the camera rotation everywhere. We're just going to change this to our eye rotation. So you can change camera 3D everywhere to eyes. And if you run it, you'll see nothing has changed. All the rotations are still looking good. And now let's animate that camera by hand with keyframe animations. This is actually very easily done in uh, Godot. I explain this a lot, but it's so awesome. Godot has this uh, animation player feature where you, you can just animate anything within Godot. So right under eyes, or right click it, add child node, and add an animation player so in the eye variable. And then in here we can just start adding animations. So click on the animation button, click new, we'll create that jumping animation. And then you can just start animating uh, variables within your uh, scene. So we'll grab the camera 3D. We'll go into transform on the right. And we'll keyframe our rotation. Click create and keyframe that position. Now in order to see what we're doing, we're actually going to go into the camera. You can do this by clicking the little preview check mark here. And now we're going to animate a small jump. So you can imagine if you jump, your head will move up a little bit and then down again. So we're just going to take the rotation, move to, let's say, 0 0.3 seconds. Right click the timeline, click duplicate keys. What we basically did is setting our starting and ending position. So the camera starts and ends at the right location. And then right here at the start at 0 0.1, I'm just going to rotate my camera a little bit. I'm actually going to right click, insert a key right there. And right here, we're going to change the values a little bit. So I'm going to do the X. I'm going to go minus three, maybe. Let's run the animation. And then I'm going to do the same for the road, uh, for the position. So again, I'm going to select the first keyframe, move to 0 0.3, duplicate the key, and 0 0.1, insert the key. I'm going to move it down a little bit, actually, minus 0 0.1. And animating is just all about tweaking. So just go in, play the animation a lot and find what looks right for you. I'm just gonna use this in ex as an example, but you can go crazy with these animations with rolling and moving side to side. Last thing I'm gonna do is set the time of the animation. Right now it's one full second, but our animation only takes up 0.3 seconds. So I'm just gonna go right here on the right, hit 0.3 and I can see so our jumping animation. Now let's trigger this animation on jump. So right here in script, you can close out this animation or drag it down. I'm gonna need that animation player to trigger the animations. So just drag and drop your animation player while holding down control into the player notes uh, 
variables. And then we'll copy this animation player and move down into our jumping logic. Handle jump. And we'll just go animation player dot play. And you can see it's suggesting our current animations. And we'll just play jump. And that's how easy it is. That's it. That's how you add animations in Godot. As you can see now we have this little keyframe animation on jump. We can give it a little more character by going back into the animation, maybe on that second keyframe in rotation, maybe add a little bit of Z rotation. I'll do two. So you get that little sideways knob. And this is all personal preference. Uh, I'm not a very good animator myself, but you can go crazy with these and it's a good thing to look at uh, popular video games and see what they're doing for animations and start there. Instead of just trying to wing everything, which I usually do, and it takes a lot of time. I'm actually going to set this X value to positive, see what that looks like. Yeah, maybe that's a better jump. Let's run it again. Yeah, I kind of like that. Let's also do some animations for landing. So we'll go into our animation player and I'm actually going to duplicate this animation by clicking the animation button again, clicking duplicate and calling this landing. And let's see. I guess it will work as a landing as well. You can, of course, change it up. You should in your game. And just for example, I'm going to use the same animation. Now to detect landing, we're going to need to know our last velocity. So we're currently keeping track of our current velocity, but we want the velocity of the last tick. So the last time the physics process ran, what was our velocity then? So we're going to create a variable for this. Uh, I'm going to create it in the movement vars. And we'll say for last velocity is equal to vector tree dot zero. And we're just going to set this. So I'm going to copy this last velocity, move all the way down and below move and slide. We're going to say last velocity is equal to velocity. Oh, don't need this. And then we're going to detect if we are on the floor, which we're already doing here, but I don't want to put it in here because it's just confusing. So we're going to add a new code block here. We're going to label it saying handle landing. I'm just going to say if is on floor. And if our last velocity dot y is less than 0, 0 So what we're saying here, if we are on the floor this tick and in our last tick we were in the air and falling, means we just landed. And we can go animation player dot play. landing. And that's not working. Oh, I'm sorry, the mistake was uh, last velocity needs to be set before move and slide. So I'll move this up. So it's last velocity set to velocity and then move and slide. I mix those two up. So let's run it again. And now you can see when we land, we get a little bump. And how I edit the bump and the roll in the demo. You can see in the demo, I'll show you right now. If I land really hard, and the player is doing a roll. If I land soft, it's doing this little bump. So I'm basically checking this uh, velocity.y variable. So I'll just print it real quick. Let's run it again. And you can see in the console that's 4.6, that's how hard we just landed. That's how much our velocity was the frame before we hit the ground. Right now it's always 4.6, but you can see if I quickly uh, expand this demo stage. I duplicated that box by Ctrl D. I'm just going to drag it down. And now you can see if we jump down onto to that. You can see we got 13. So for example you could go if we're less than 10 you'll do the 
raw animation, which doesn't exist yet, we'll create it in a second. And elif, so else if last velocity is less than four, we'll do our normal landing animation. So I'll quickly create that raw animation, go back into the animation player. I'm going to duplicate this landing. Duplicate, call it roll. And I'll go into the camera preview. And for the roll, I'm just going to rotate. Oh, stop the project. It was giving me a lot of errors. And for the roll, I'm just going to rotate the camera uh, in a 360. So I'll take that X value and right here I'll go uh, 360 divided by 2. And at the end, I'm going to go 360. Let's play it. So it's going the wrong way around. So I'll go minus 180. And here I'll go minus 360. So that's a very ugly roll. I'll quickly move down the position. So I'll take the second position keyframe. And move by, down by 0 0.5. And I'll actually make this animation a little longer by going right here on the right of the timeline. Going 0 0.6. And I'm just going to select these keyframes and drag them out a little bit like this. So that's a little roll, it's a little choppy, but let's run it and just see if it works. Oh, oh of course we have to set the last velocity, or we have to check for n minus 10 and minus 4. Let's run it again. Now you can see we got our normal bumping animation when you jump, when we jump a great height. The little roll on landing. I asked Reddit about the landing animation and what they thought of it, and they said some of them were very against it, saying it was super disorientating. Some people liked it. So be careful when you do this, not everybody likes these rolling animations or these really heavy camera animations. Sometimes they're quite disorientating. So, yeah, like I said in the intro, this was all the features I was intending to teach in this tutorial series, but I got a lot of requests. So, of course, I'll get to those, but it's going to take some time. There's some techniques I've never done before. And I don't want to just quickly learn something myself and then instantly teach it to somebody else without really knowing how it works properly. So I'm going to be doing a lot of testing in vaulting and wall running. And I have a pretty good idea of how to do this. But first, I would like to implement it very nicely myself before I teach it to other people. So I'm not setting a very bad example. So there will be more parts to this series. First, I'm going to leave it as is for now. This was my intention for the tutorial series, but I would love to get to all of the requests that you guys have made. So I'll get to working on that. I might post some other content in the meantime, because I cannot be working on one project the whole time. I just go crazy. So yeah, definitely keep an eye out for the next couple of parts. We're going to be working on your requests. And if you have some more requests, of course, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to most of them, hopefully all of them. But yeah, thank you for the great support on this series so far. I hope to keep it going. And until the next part, bye.